What is going on guys, it's Datdupa46 here, and uh, I recently just picked up this MTH Realtrack switch on eBay for very low amount of money, because it was quote-unquote broken, and uh, I figured I'd give it a shot, and plus it was missing this motor, which I also picked up on eBay as well. Um, and it turns out this switch is actually perfectly fine. As you can see, it's it's on right now, and here's the, re here's the remote switch, and it it obviously switches back and forth. There are no problems there. I think the red bulb is out. I might have to replace that. But Okay, so let's get into why I think these people thought it was defective and um, how hazardous it actually was, the fact that the way this thing was wired. So let's go over a few things before we start. So this particular motor actually has two directions. Okay, It's got the forward and then the reverse in order to switch the, the track in the middle here. And... Uh, this red wire will control one direction while the, the green one will control the other. Most likely it's some type of opposite polarity type of switching using maybe electromagnetism or something like that. But uh, And then these two posts are for um, some type of AC source, like an accessory power is what they call it in uh, model railroad world. The strange thing to call it, but basically just another AC source so you don't have to tax the main AC source here. As you can see when we switch, there's flickering going on, and when you're doing that multiple times on one on one uh, AC source, that can cause maybe some overload and some clipping in the waveforms, which will result in engines maybe stopping, slowing down, um, stuff like that. And it may act as a DC pulse, which uh, unfortunately these engines use DC pulsing to... Um, actually trigger the the sound characteristics so things like the passenger station uh, calls or the horns or the whistles or the bells stuff like that's all triggered through DC pulsing and it's either a constant uh, and then it'll change depending upon frequency and spacing and you know hexadecimal values maybe I'm not entirely sure how the digital system works on that but I definitely know it's triggered by DC pulsing and um, well what happens when you do this it may accidentally create a DC pulse, and that's why you see the lights flicker. Um, but like I said, you can see the switch works just fine. But the, the main issue here was, and this is really uh, a big thing I think I should talk about, considering you know young children might be have access to the stuff. Please consult... If you don't understand electronics very well, please consult the instruction manual. So, when I first got this... I was totally confused because what would happen is this would be powered on, but the motor would not work at all. I mean, I tried to flip the switch like that and nothing would happen. So I thought, that's really strange. So I found out it was getting uh, power from the, the track when it was connected. But the real issue was, was the fact that these two wires here were connected to these two posts, the accessory terminal posts. So that means that the motor control did, wouldn't do anything. Um, and I found out when I took the uh, when I flipped it over and, and took it apart that these two terminals are connected to a giant capacitor in uh, parallel. So the impedance is so high that what happens is it creates a short in between these two uh, these two posts here and the, the ground. So what happens is all that current that gets charged up from the capacitor discharges directly back into this switch. And I would see the switch, and you can see now that it's completely clean, there's no uh, flickering in here, but it would cause an enormous short uh, circuit around the, around the track. It would cause the engine to stop and uh, actually, you know, reverse directions, which, which means it cut off current completely. It would cause... Um, the transformer to overload uh, on current, so I thought there's got to be a short in here somewhere, and it uh, turns out it was the giant capacitor that was discharging everything back into the switch, and sparks, if you held it long enough, would actually fly out the top of this thing. Um, and it, if you touch this metal rail and a part of the track on accident, you could, you could get really, really hurt, if not die, because this is serious amounts of current coming here um, from the electricity spewing out. So this is the ignorance that with model railroading is a lot of people don't understand how electronics work and they, they wire things up without looking at the instruction manual. Um, there's a reason these two posts are tied together because they're for a constant power source. And as I said before, that's optimal if you don't want any type of DC waveforms accidentally finding their way onto the track and ruining your, your engine run. So these two posts here are designated for motor control and this is de designated for ground. So after I did that and I threw the, the motor on here, 
it, it took me no more than three minutes to figure out the problem after taking the uh, the screw ca or the screw placement off. It was working perfectly fine. Like I said, the only issue is just the the little light here. The I don't know if it's an LED or an incandescent, but it's something. And then sometimes this motor gets stuck on the bottom. There's a a latch problem that I can fix, no problem. But my point is, is that if you're gonna get into model railroading and start messing with electronics, this stuff is not as safe as or as foolproof as people think. Uh, you can really hurt yourself or completely destroy your, you know, four hundred dollar engine or something like that if you make one mistake with electrical wiring. So there's a lot of buffer circuitry and things like that inside of the engines that maybe will protect them from certain uh, large pulses of uh, current, but there's no guarantees with electronics. That's the one thing I've learned as an electrical engineer. So you have to be extremely careful if you don't have the, the world worth of money to spend on stuff. But um, this was a good pick by me because um, if I wanted to, I could actually resell this for uh, a lot more money than what I paid for it. But I think I'm going to keep it for now and just kind of play around with it, um, see what's going on with that. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. And I will come out with a little, once I have a little bit more time on my hands, I'll probably start doing model railroad electronics videos. Like I said, I've got an A-stable multi-vibrator um, circuit to alternate flashing lights on a uh, from an AC in power source uh, for uh, like a crossing flasher, something like a, like a Mark's or Lionel 154. I have a demo up that on my channel already. And uh, also, I'll probably go over why this is so dangerous, and uh, I'll draw out the circuit diagrams, and I'll take this thing apart and show you what went wrong with this. And I'll go over other common misconceptions or um, pitfalls when it comes to electronics and model railroading. I might do some tutorials as well. But that's